Hey guys, welcome back to the Film Fan Club. Sam Carico here. I just wanted to let you know right at the top that this video will have spoilers in it, so you've been warned. Okay, so I finally finished The Crown Season 1 on Netflix. Check out my review for it if you haven't yet. Um, but uh, I needed something else to fill the British, uh, like, political drama void in my life. Something to, like, some, some, I needed some r English rich people problems to, to distract me from my life's problems. So I took to, uh, the, cr or the Crown, of course, and then now I'm watching Victoria on PBS. I watched it right after I finished the season finale of uh, Sherlock, so check out my review for that if you haven't yet. Plug. Um, but... Victoria stars uh, Jenna Louise Coleman as the queen, uh, Victoria, and uh, it takes place in the 1800s, and uh, Victoria, I did some research, and she becomes uh, queen when she's 18 years old, and I was wondering how this is going to work juxtaposed against the crown. So, and I, I like the way that uh, whenever she, it starts with the death of her uncle, the king, so it starts immediately with uh, Victoria becoming the queen, and she immediately has, she's very confident in her role, and I like the way that Jenna Coleman plays it. Because with uh, Claire Foy and Elizabeth, and of course this just might be the way that the actual people are or were, um, Elizabeth in the second, Elizabeth the second in the Crown is very unsure of herself and lets a lot of people walk all over her um, to a fault. Whereas uh, in Victoria, Queen Victoria seems to let. Um, she seems to be very confident of herself and kind of almost overconfident to a fault. She doesn't let a lot of people talk over her, talk uh, talk to her, uh, and tell her what to do. She uh, already like is doing a lot of new things. She uh, chooses her name. She wants to be Queen Victoria. She uh, be called that, and uh, it's funny because there's a little in joke where they're like, "Hey." Why don't you go by uh, Elizabeth? Elizabeth II would be a nice name for a queen. <laughs> it's funny because I just watched The Crown. Um, but she also holds a private meeting with the Prime Minister and puts this new lady in charge of her house, of the household, which is against the wills of uh, other people because other people were like, hey, maybe I should sit in with your meeting with the Prime Minister. And hey, maybe you should put this other person in charge. And she's... She's not having any of that. She is, uh, she's the queen. She's gonna let, she's gonna do what she wants, which is nice because that's something I always complained about in The Crown. I was like, hey, you're the queen. Why don't you just do what you want? But I guess, of course, it's a constitutional monarchy, and I guess the queen just has less power with every single regime. So, uh, but so I mean, I guess, at least she has a little bit of power here, and she does get to use it. Um, Jenna Coleman is really likable as an actress. I really like get, getting to see her in this role. She br she brings a, a kind of innocence to the character, um, just like she did with Clara Oswald in Doctor Who. Uh, but in this, she brings that kind of tenacity and that kind of uh, that overconfidence and that kind of uh, that uh, extravagant kind of holding yourself up high on a pedestal kind of thing, which, of course, she's the queen, she's gonna have that. Not everything's all peaches and cream, though, whenever she's the queen, because there already seems to be a plot to dethrone her. her some of her ancestors, or not ancestors, but her elders, her relatives, are talking about, hey, like, well, you know, now that she's in power, that means that this person's next in line for the throne. Wouldn't it be more convenient if this person was in power than her? And it, so there's a lot of that kind of going on, a lot of that sort of thing. She's got some, like, German, like, relatives or something like that that we see a couple scenes of them talking about her. And then whenever there are people actually talking to the queen, they don't, like, say anything threatening, but they're just so belittling. You can tell that there's not a lot of respect within the family for her because she is the queen now. She's so young, and of course she's a woman, and it's the 1800s, so things are more sexist than they were in in the 1950s when I saw the crown or when the crown takes place so uh, there's going to be a lot of that everyone's so belittling to her and she but she does stand up for herself more than Elizabeth II does so that's that's nice to get to see there's this dude Melbourne who's the prime minister he uh, kind of he latches on to her and talks to her a lot and they spend a lot of time together she's very forward about how she she eventually grew gets a, a romantic interest for for Lord uh, for Lord Melbourne who's the prime minister which is kind of creepy because he's like 40 years older than her and he's a widower which is why he's a little bit hesitant but just the thought of them together is a little bit kind of weird um but she's very she's very forward very forward about it but Melbourne there's a lot of party politics going on because Melbourne is a Whig which is the liberal party at the time and then uh, her uh, her I guess a uh, Victoria's stepfather uh, Sir John is a uh, member of the conservative party so really they the Whigs are uh, I guess the the prime minister is a Whig and they don't want him to kind of have too much control over the queen because then that would just kind of def deflate the separate uh, separation of uh, powers in Britain 
and whatnot. So, but of course, it's really not really about the separation of powers as much as it is one party wants more power than the other party. And it's it's also part of why Sir John is ends up pushing for a regency because there's this. Uh, there's this uh, scandal, kind of, with Lady Flora, who works, I guess, at the, uh, works for uh, Victoria, and uh, she, uh, Victoria accuses uh, uh, of Lady Flora, or, I don't, I, I, I kind of wasn't following this very well, but, uh, there's, this is a dense show, it's like an hour, it's like two hours long, it's a little bit too long for my taste, there's a lot of stuff, I wish they could have cut it down a little bit, but I think future episodes will be cut down a little bit, maybe like an hour and a half, um, but Lady Flora, turns out she wasn't pregnant like Victoria thought. She just had a tumor and she ends up dying. So there's a lot of big scandal going on with Victoria because she falsely accused her of being pregnant and all this stuff. And I don't know why that was a big deal. Like I said, I wasn't I was on my phone for a little bit. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> um, but there's a lot of big scandal going on. So then people start to, and then also, uh, uh, Victoria starts accusing people like in her court of whatnot and, and whatnot of being kind of corrupt and people doing uh, double stuff. And, uh, even though this is like hours before her own inauguration and, uh, that's a uh, pretty scary that she's kind of getting, getting a little bit too, a little bit too cocky in her role as queen, maybe. I don't know. That's but people start to question whether she's insane or not, which I didn't think that they she went that far with accusing someone of being pregnant when she wasn't, and then maybe saying, "Hey, maybe you're corrupt, maybe you're not," you know. And the, I don't think that stuff that that's a little bit paranoid, but not insane. But of course, we're just coming off the heels of the Mad King in the previous century, uh, King George the Third, I believe, the king who lost America, and uh, so there's this huge kind of looming uh, fear of her kind of. Uh, being like her her relatives, being like the previous uh, people that were in charge. So also, it's also just kind of a way for Sir John to kind of push for her mother, the, uh, Victoria's mother, be like, maybe you should be in charge as the Queen Regent. All in all, this film or this show's cinematography is beautiful. I love the the production design. Everything is just so eloquent for a PBS show, especially because the crown it it feels like it fits right in with the crown, except for the color palette's a little bit brighter in this show, which I like. But the crown was the most expensive show that Netflix has ever done. It had the largest budget for a Netflix show, and this show feels like it fits right in with that. And I'm not sure what the budget for PBS shows are for BB. I think this is a BBC show actually, but I'm not sure what the budget was, but it fits. Right right in so it feels like this that whenever it comes to set design and production design might be the same thing um and uh, just the cinematography and the costume design and everything looks so beautiful and so well shot and it's really well acted too i gotta say as the political party drama ensues, there's, I guess, uh, Victoria's got a lot of friends who are Whigs, even more so. She's, uh, there's not just Melbourne who's the Whig, but a lot of her friends, uh, she's, uh, like, wives, uh, she's friends with wives of a lot of the prominent party members. So there's in, is, there's this increasing pressure to kind of have her cut off ties with all of her friends, which really sucks. It's kind of an isolationist kind of thing. And it's still all Sir John kind of conspiring. He's still trying to paint her as an insane person. Eventually, Melbourne does does resign, but uh, Victoria tries to get him back because as the political party drama continues to ensue, and Melbourne's just like, I can't have it. It's too much. And um, I, th I can't remember if she, uh, I think he, uh, I can't remember if uh, Melbourne stays on or if uh, uh, Victoria try if, if she's successful in getting him to, uh, to remain prime minister or if he does leave. I can't remember, but I'm sure they'll explore that in episode two. Um, and then they become, it, it comes time for Victoria's birthday party. Things get a little out of hand. Rats take over the place and she has a screaming fit and everyone's like, oh, maybe she is insane because she got scared of rats and she's an 18 year old girl. Of course she's going to get scared of rats. So there's a couple things where they make, they make, uh, like jumps to, they jump to the character, characters jump to conclusions at time where I'm like, I don't really think that's something that I would do, but, um, but of course this is like the 18, this is an entirely different culture than what I'm used to. So I can't really speak on what they would do. Cause I don't, I don't understand their struggle. So she does remain in control in the end though. So everything's still good. She's not crazy. She's still the queen. There are these backdoor kind of things going on though. And I think Melbourne does stay on as prime minister because eventually they end this episode with him kind of realizing that eventually she's going to have a husband that she looks to for advice. And that's not going to be me because of the way things are. I'm the prime minister. She is uh, the queen of England. She's 40 years younger than me and she's going to marry someone else eventually. So there's that. I'm really interested to see how their relationship might blossom or bloom or you know what will become of it um what will become of this inter uh, the party politics that's going on with who's gonna win i, I think the way i mean obviously well i'm not gonna get into my politics or who i think should win that politic party politic drama um 
a lot of wheels turning, a lot of stuff going on. It's a really interesting start to the season. Uh, there's only eight episodes, so I am going to try. I like this like mini series kind of thing. So it's not really too. I, I like that they can kind of. They have a beginning and a middle and an end they want to tell, and I'm really interested to see interested to see what that story is. I don't think they're just they're just writing until the show ends. I think they have a they have an end game in mind, and I'm interested to see what that is. So let me know what you think uh, think of Victoria in the comments section below. I'm going to give. Um, this first episode, uh, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Hey, thanks for checking this video out. If you like it, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel for more content like this. We got more TV recaps, movie reviews, movie news, podcasts, the whole shebang. Subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well, at Samuel D. Carico. Thanks a lot. You have a good one.